Hi, 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 everybody, hi. Awesome, awesome. Can we all get off our phones quickly? I know it's all uh, busy morning, but uh, I, I hope you'll enjoy the first two episodes you'll watch this afternoon or this morning. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a comedian, so this the habit doesn't die, okay? I, I need you all to be here. Uh, but uh, I hope uh, everybody enjoyed it and uh, we'll start the Q&A soon. Uh, but quickly, before we introduce our panel, we'll talk about what the show is. Uh, it's celebrating love through the lens of a few members from the LGBTQIA plus community, Prime Video, India's most loved entertainment destination, along with Vice Studios Productions, are proud to present their labor of love, Rainbow Rishta. Launching on November 7th. Yes. In over 240 countries and territories, so we'll get to see Bayandar in Finland. Like it's amazing. Uh, it's a first of its kind unscripted series that showcases six stories of love in a way that has never been witnessed in India before. Rainbow Rishta is a six-part docu series directed by Jairip Sarkar, along with story directors Riday Nagpal and Shubhra Chatterjee, and written by Monisha Chagrajan, me Naveen Narona, and Sneha Nair, giving the world a unique, candid, and unflinchingly honest window into the lives of members of the community. This series features stories from different parts of the country through the real life experience of Trinita Haldar, Aishwarya Aishman, Daniela Mendonca, Anis Saikia, Sanam Chaudhary, Soham Sen Gupta, Suresh Ramdas and Saddam. I would like to invite Nikhil Madhok, head of Hindi Originals Prime Video India. <laughs> Samira Kanwar, VP content for Asia Pacific Advice India. And series director Jaydeep Sarkar. Put your hands together, everybody. Yes, yes. Uh, we call them my bap in our industry because they make allows us to make a shoes. Um, I genuinely feel that this is something that my entire life has built up to. I'm a queer comedian, writer, podcaster. And uh, in 2021 is when we started the search for, for the people whose stories we'd like to tell. And we interviewed over 250 queer folks and shortlisted 12, out of which six made it to the final shoot. And uh, I'm just thrilled that the world gets to see them as we got to see them. So uh, once again, let's put our hands together for the team that made this happen. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So I have three questions that I'll ask our three panelists and then the floor is open to all of us to ask all the questions. Uh, Nikhil, let me start with you. Um, you know, we are in a weird time right now in a country where, you know, whenever something queer comes out, there's a lot of, lot of hate sometimes online. Uh, despite that, why did you decide that this is the topic that you want to cover? And not, why, why non-fiction and not fiction? Sure. Um, you know, my first response to that is why not? You know, um, uh, why shouldn't we be telling these stories? And we're really proud to tell this uh, uh, this story. Uh, I think the, the community at large has been uh, sort of misrepresented and uh, misunderstood by, uh, by society at large. And we at Prime Video, we really believe in the power of storytelling um, and the positive change that it can create and, you know, break down barriers, make things more inclusive, get people together. And when, you know, sort of Vice came to us with this idea, we felt that this absolutely ticks all the boxes because it's such a celebration of love, uh, the way Jaydeep and team have directed it and constructed it. When you see this, you realize the sort of pure emotion behind the show, uh, six, you know, wonderful stories. Uh, and after watching each story uh, and the entire series, what you are left with is hopefully a feeling of more understanding, uh, a feeling of love, a feeling where prejudices are sort of broken down. Uh, and that's really what we want to attempt with this show. And, um, you know, we feel that once it comes out, this is going to have a real positive impact. So, and and why if, uh, a docu-series and not fiction? I think in, in fiction, we've uh, had a lot of uh, representation in our shows, whether it's uh, Made in Heaven, whether it's uh, Modern Love, FOMO Shots. Uh, but to get a really authentic experience, we felt that, this one needs to be with real people uh, and uh, that's when the real emotions will come out uh, and the sort of docu-series format was uh, the best way to put that forward. Absolutely. Thank you, Nikhil. And, and I think that's very important also because having having been a queer content creator, putting out content out there, people usually bracket us in the in the sex part of it because sexuality is just like a mard or mard or a trans. They always become like that. But then when you really break it down, love is just love. You know, that's what I'm talking about is that we have, like if you see Anis and Sanam's story, house hunting is a, is a pain for all of us in Bombay, especially if you're in the fringes. So like to cover the story and tell it from an authentic POV, I think is genuinely what something this country needed. And I'm so glad we get to see it. Uh, JD, my next question is for you. Uh, 
throughout the entire process of making the show, like not only did we get access to the queer folks that we uh, covered in the stories, but we also met their families and colleagues, like people who we know that might be difficult to access, you know, because it's a queer landscape. So what was the biggest challenges maneuvering this like entirely? Um, I think uh, for this particular show, it... Um, you know, it's 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 really interesting what it revealed that actually the world is a nice place. We met incredible people. We met incredible families, neighbors, and Daniela's story. How Bhayandar comes together to you know get make that marriage happen. What was really, I think, tough for us to navigate was our gaze, which is, you know, we have to look at characters with empathy, celebrate them, and yet, you know, keep the authenticity. So um, you guys saw the second episode and you see that fight on the terrace that Daniela and Joel have. You know, it is very easy for us to, you know, sort of sensationalize it yeah. or make it very like, but that defeats the purpose because, you know, for me, the characters have always been superheroes. Yeah. They've always been victims. So for us, uh, managing the gaze, but honestly, if you, uh, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, but uh, in terms of access, it has been incredible, isn't yeah, it? Like yeah. the way uh, all the families, whether it's uh, Anise's mother, you know, the kind of acceptance that is there in the world that we encountered, it was a revelation. Honestly, before this, I thought that the world is a shit place. I really now, after making this show, think the world is a great place. <laughs> It is. And everyone just wants to be happy and love, really. And yeah. these are not just words. Like. And, and we shot in pockets of India where one might assume that queerness might not be accepted. But it was fairly like, yeah, okay, cool. You yeah. know, I think sometimes, again, we get caught up in our cities and we're like, oh, it's a big deal. But our regular folks in our country, they just don't give a shit. They just move on. Like, pani barna hai, kapla dona hai, let's go. Yeah, you know, and I really want to... Um, say this, uh, there's constantly this thing of Western civilization. Actually, the whole 377 is the Western civilization, yeah, yeah. the Victorian laws and the colonialism. Correct. We are such a permissive, such a beautiful, progressive country forever. Yeah, and yeah. that love exists everywhere. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, JD. Uh, Samira, uh, from Vice, uh, you know, we, we've seen several topics across the queer spectrum being covered internationally as well as in India. But what about this topic stood out for you so much that you were like, okay, we can we can rally behind this. The idea about queer love or associations or marriages for that matter. What what stood out for you? Um I mean everything stood out because it's not being told enough. So I mean from the moment Vice sort of formed in India, this was one of our agendas is to sort of normalize these conversations, build empathy, show joy instead of only showing prejudice, you know, because there are people living their lives and they're happy and they're doing things that everybody does. But we don't see that side of the queer community. It's only when things go wrong that like it's put out in newspapers and stuff like that. So the idea was let's do a show that celebrates queer joy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, when we when we took it to Amazon, and they were like, yes, let's do it. Like, it was so amazing to find a partner that was completely on the same page as us. Absolutely. Like, uh, I'm a writer, so, you know, uh, we, we face the, the most amount of feedback when we write stuff, fiction or non-fiction. But I have to give, like, hands off to, like, hats off to, to Prime Video. They were really like on on board with this, like, okay, y'all are doing this. We trust your vision. And I think that was great for us to also uh, experiment this. You know, like, for example, putting up a wedding together was was the biggest daunting thing that all of us could have imagined. But we pulled it through. Bayandar came through, as I said. And, and my hometown, I feel finally proud that I was from there. Otherwise, it's okay. But but it's such a, such a great feeling to have all of us rally together and make this happen. So I think um, it's, it's a miracle. It's a lightning in a bottle that we've captured. And I hope everybody resonates with this when it comes down on November 7th. Uh, we'll open the floor to more questions now from, from all of y'all. Please, uh, okay, sir. Can we have a mic for him? Oh, okay. They've already picked somebody, sorry. Uh, hi, this is hi. Letty from Midday. Hi. Hi, Letty. Uh, my question is to Jadeep. Uh, among the 12 that were shortlisted, uh, why do, I mean, besides the time constraints and the limited time that you had to fit it in, uh, what... What was the reason why the other stories were not picked and these were picked? Like, why? Uh, 
Well, uh, we had certain criteria when we were casting. One, um, you know, I, uh, Naveen and I were very clear from the very beginning. Naveen is also the casting director of the show. We were very clear that, you know, you see um, gay love stories a lot, visibly uh, sort of, you know, uh, across uh, stories, fiction, films, but you don't see trans stories. You don't see trans love stories or even lesbian love stories that much. So we wanted to sort of, you know, cover the spectrum. Um, and we wanted compelling stories from across the spectrum. Um, and there's so much more to cover. Hopefully there'll be a second season and then we can feature the others. <laughs> also, I think we were, we looked at uh, characters that were genuinely going through pivotal yes. moments in their life. You know, so we yeah. had a story to tell. Yeah. If you want to yeah. elaborate. No, no, fair, yeah. fair. No, no, absolutely. And the other thing that, you know, we wanted to do is we wanted the themes to be universal. So, for example, when Anis and Sanam are looking for a home, uh, like Naveen said, you know, anyone on the fringes who's looking for a home will relate to it. Yeah. You know, whether it's a live-in couple and the society is saying, Pele Shadi ka certificate, dekho, they will relate to it. So, at the end of the day, we wanted themes and these moments and uh, sort of, you know, stories which were universal and these six really resonated with us. And of course, they're phenomenal characters, so... Yeah, yeah, also, I think geographically, we had to, like, have them diverse because we were, like, getting a lot of stories from Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore, and we've seen those, you know what I'm saying? Like, City Life, I think going to Imphal for that matter, which you haven't seen yet, uh, wait for it. So it's a gorgeous, like, it's a beautiful thing to look at. And and I think it's in, in the current time also, uh, we have to tell stories from Manipur, we have to tell stories from Guwahati, we have to tell stories from Hampi. You know, t small towns where we don't get to hear stories of queerness from. So I think that was a criteria where we were shortlisting. Uh, but generally like we didn't want to let go of anybody we're like so many beautiful people we've met so many great stories that we've touched uh, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari but like you know there are certain constraints as JD said but then we finally got this perfect cast of six people and I think when we got them and when we presented the stories to Amazon we immediately all felt it like there were goosebumps in the entire room so I think that was unanimous yeah our next question yeah, yeah. here uh uh, coming back to the casting of Trinetra, uh, was done through audition or she has already done uh, Made in Heaven season 2 like that? How was yeah. Trinetra casted? Oh, this was cast way before uh, David Shaw. I mean, I, I don't know whether made in, made in Heaven. No, so our casting process were generally interviews, so not auditions because they are not actors. So there were in extensive interviews that Naveen did with Trinetra. And uh, the way she spoke, she's all of 25. Uh, such an amazing, prolific doctor, actor. Uh, like she ticked all the boxes and she speaks so well um, we, didn't know. We, we didn't know about Made in Heaven yeah, at that, we that no time we didn't know, know. Yeah. She, she, she's a great presence on the on Instagram in the internet yeah. she's very inspiring she's yeah. back then so. she was sharing her stories of transition and yeah. you know yeah. helping other trans folks come to terms with their identity that was her yeah. uh, Instagram you know uh, brand and we were like okay we're very drawn to that personality and then like I think after two months was when she was announced to be on the cast yeah. uh, but by then we're already like we're in, within the first week we had shortlisted Trinetra and Lush because we loved them so much they were just so genuine and so brimming with joy you know when, when we interviewed them we knew <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for Amazon uh, uh, November 7th you told it's streaming no it's uh, like your regular right? it will be streaming in regional languages of uh, India or whatever the, how it is language that's right it's, it's, it's going to be uh, all six episodes together starting November 7th and uh, we also, uh, universally for all our unscripted shows, we also dub them in different languages. Some happen on the day and date of release and some happen with a uh, sort of a gap. Uh, but eventually all the content is accessible in a, at least in six Indian languages and then multiple global languages. They're also subtitled in English, all of them. So the idea is to make sure as many people can access it. Hi, this is Samina here from Times of India's Zoom channel. So my question Hi. is about when you're making this uh, docu uh, series, uh, were you very careful that it should not even mock at the same time present the stories, pre uh, you know, precisely and being very sure that, you know, it doesn't hurt their sentiments where when you're trying to talk about their journey about it or, you know, their acceptance or some of them are also getting rejected. So it should not be like come in a humorous way to people. So what was your thought behind that? Uh, you know, I, uh, 
I'm kind of tired of seeing queer characters handled with kid gloves. And what happens is we are all constantly exoticized. Uh, everyone is very careful about how to present a queer character, but at the end of the day, we are all very regular, normal people. हम भी दो समोसे खाते तो हमें भी गैस होता है. So I did not have to really, you know, uh, make sure that oh, we have to be honestly not really. But yes, we were sensitive as we would with any character, so that they come across like I was saying earlier. as superheroes at the end of the day i do have a very uh, selfish motivation with this show which is younger queer people who are watching this show should see these stories and feel confident and to be able to own their sexuality to be able to talk about who they are to the people who are close to them i hope this show becomes a vehicle for that now if i mock my characters if i don't show them with respect that selfish motivation of mine so that policing i was always kind of we were always uh, you know doing that um but that that said i don't like to see my characters always you know taken very seriously one has to see life with humor you know there is wit in every moment and that is how we normalize it otherwise you know we are either putting them on a pedestal or we are villainizing queer characters i wanted to sh- make a show where i wanted to say queer straight we all have the same problems and we are the you know we have the same struggles yeah it's, it's just basically just as that danila said right like my hometown is just like me it's like it's in the middle and that she has a sense of humor about it and all queer folks we just when when we gather we have a great sense of humor about our queerness also it's just that when the when the world looks at us as as bad and evil people that's when we are like but humne kuch kiya hi nahi hai we are just vibing with as as we are eating samosas we're paying taxes what more can we do to like appease you all you know what i'm saying so that's what our our and because i'm queer jdb is queer most of the team that worked yeah, on this that show. is something that you know i really yeah. have to give props to amazon and vice yeah. because you know so much of our crew was queer so much and the rest of them were allies uh, it's been a dream journey it's been the first set where so many of us queer people felt like it was it was a safe space yeah. i have never felt like this i've always felt like an outsider in a straight world uh but this set was the first time i felt like oh i belong here so, and and so did everyone absolutely like even even like our camera operators they were watching a drag show happen for the first time and they were all like let's go let's go you know that that, that attitude of being gung ho about something that we were capturing for the first time in the history of india was everybody was on board as i said from before right so we had no issues like if if there was some uh, you know for pass we would be like let's talk about it let's discuss it and everybody grew together i think at the end of it even even like uh, trinetra danila if, if at any point anybody made a mistake they were correcting with with warmth and not with like hatred or like animosity so there was never that we were always a cohesive family so much so that when we shot with them for 2 3 weeks and then left their houses they would feel a void in their life they like yaar subah nahi aaya camera leke ab kya ho gaya so that was like how we became almost one with them so there was no you know if if this if this every ever chiding or playing it's always because as family as how you talk to each other right that's what it was and just to add i wanted to also ask uh, like over the years we have seen that the acceptance by their families were was less but now when i see the series i see that change that you know ch- that change though they are very selective when it comes to their reclusive they have their communities and they are very selective of the kind of friends they make do you feel that change has evolved uh, you know the families accepting them the way they are like when uh, uh, one of the couples they were be, uh, being accepted for their love you know and she was okay with this person dating the yeah, and you know accepting as bahu for that matter you ah. know on the in the daniela uh, daniela yeah. yeah. daniela yes, yes yeah um no of course see there are challenges as well so for example in anis and sanam story as well anis's family as you will realize without giving spoilers it's been hard for anis to um with her family and she talks about it in the show whereas sanam's sister has other problems ki tumne ghar nahi liya tumne mattress le liya you know so she has no bias and prejudice in her head um what we yes the struggles are there correct me navi if i am wrong and it takes time for even like if i came out uh, of the closet at 33 um, and if i have come out if it's taken me 33 years i can't expect my mother the next day to be oh yeah great now go us my mom will also be scared na because unhone aise narratives dekhe nahi hai life mein unko lagega ki oh mera beta akela kaise jiyega usko koi milega ki nahi unko bhi time lagega so the challenges are there but 
overall uh, yeah no i think uh, and 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 like navin was saying in smaller town india more than big cities and i don't know what the science behind it is there is a lot of acceptance and there yeah, is a lot of kindness things, yeah. and there is a lot of uh, joy uh, you know and and i and i think my instagram al- algorithm has been lying to me the world is not such a bad place yeah. I I I want to add this like I've been with my partner for five and a half years now, and my partner comes home for birthday cutting cake cutting like TV na laya chalo TV dikte match dikte so it's just a matter of time you know I think as as Jaydeep said like you can't expect your parents to come up and be like yeah okay okay you're, you're gay it's fine uh, they will take time they will take time to research understand they will also lose friends my my family has lost a lot of people and if they always say कि आपका बेटा क्या कर रहा है शीलक हमारा बेटा कमाता है हम खिलाते हैं हमारे लिए अच्छा है you know uh, hello everyone this is Simran Singh from DNA first of all big congratulations to you guys <coughs> seriously the series has the, the two episode touched me and jo apne kaha na ki wo universal hai baat hai jo struggles hain jo wo universal hai it's not only limited to you know queer community <coughs> so mera sawal aapse hai ki while i was watching i, I was finding it so relatable the problems of being a bollywood tenant ho ya acceptance ho or even the clashes sub relatable the mera sawal aapse hai ki since you you guys have worked so hard on and representing queer community mera ye ye bhi banta hai ki after watching or while shooting or while making this series aisa tha ki डिड यू फाइंड योर सेल्फ की यार हम लोग फिर भी थोड़े प्रिवलेज हैं भले एक्सेप्टेंस हो या कुछ भी सोसाइटी हम सोसाइटी में रहते हैं वी आर स्टिल बिट प्रिवलेज जब हम आगे जाते हैं जब हम भयंदर में जाते हैं वी गो डीपर इन टू द यू नो स्टेट्स डिफरेंट स्टेट्स या इंडिया में जाते हैं वॉज देर एनी मोमेंट ऑफ एनलाइटमेंट फॉर यू गाइज वाइल यू आर मेकिंग दिस सीरीज आई मीन देखिए प्रिवलेज तो है और मैं तो पहली चीज तो ये स्पेक्ट्रम जो है यू नो एज अ गे मैन तो आई तो थिंक आई मैट द टॉप ऑफ द स्पेक्ट्रम सो आई मीन फॉर मी ऑल्सो टू अंडरस्टैंड द ट्रांस एक्सपीरियंस इट हैज बीन अ वेरी लॉन्ग जर्नी बिकॉज द ट्रांस जर्नी एंड द सर्ट ऑफ द गे जर्नी कैन नॉट बी कंपेयर सो वो एक प्रिविलेज आई वॉज ऑलवेज अवेयर ऑफ एंड आई थिंक नवीन एज वेल बट यार प्रिविलेज जो यस uh you know if you see economic privilege or if you see big cities or living in that kind of thing but the irony is ki wahan pe i have seen more regressive people whereas when we went to imphal we realized that that's the only state in india that has this lottery where everyone who wants to transition they can put money ha huh, in this lottery then every 6 months two people are chosen and two people get that money to transition ha huh, imphal mein theek hai now they get that money to transition the other people who are putting in the money jinke turn nahi aata hai they are okay with it because they are like acha kisi ka to bhala ho raha hai someone is being able to transition abhi aap mujhe batao kaun sa the privileged hai imphal ki bombay bandra so ye jo irony hai jo hum constantly we were confronting and you know ye ek to myth mera toota hai ki hum log bade shaharon mein humko bahut pata hai humko nahi pata hai actually bandra se kafi zyada progressive bhayandar hai ye main aapko stamp paper pe likh ke de sakta hu <laughs> absolutely i think and if you even see like when we talk talk about privileges even across the spectrum you'll see like trinita's life is not as same as dan's life even both of them being on the trans spectrum they're not the same like dan's family if you see if you see the thing that is constantly doing in the background they have to make thousands of those per day to earn 100 rupees so that's how they make a living the family so they are coming from a very difficult time i grew up in bandar myself i my mom gave tuitions and babysat kids to make money so we understand that the privilege doesn't come from from having you know go on your identity that is the first step because even lush has accepted themselves anis and sanam also accepted themselves but when you have that power what do you do with that that's the question these are all people who are coming out and are community leaders in their own way homonoy ho jaye assam mein ya fir south mein suresh soham ka bhi story aayega you will see them as well they all trying to make the change themselves because they like hamara come out ho gaya to hamara ho gaya nahi we have to keep taking the next generation with us so that's what i think is the major crux of the story as well you will see that across the spectrum there is different kinds of lifestyles and we all meet peace with that beyond that kya you know thank you for your kind words so sweet thank you hi um i'm priyanka uh my question is to the makers and to the writers and directors separately like uh one of the ways i judge a film especially about queer is the reaction like if a wrong scene gets if the right scene gets the wrong reaction i know the gaze is you know 
is messed up. Uh, but today when I watched the two episodes, one of the best scenes is the terrace scene between, <laughs> you know, uh, not because of the fight, but the scene that comes before and after. That is what sets the scene apart as being normal. You know, if it was not there, then like you said, it would have been sensationalized. So do you think this uh, relatability comes because you have a queer team that writes it? Because for them, this is normal, right? For any queer writer, like when I watch it, I'm like, okay, this is my life. This is everybody's life. So is it the queer team? Then if that is the case, where are we in Indian filmmaking? This is for the makers. To get more queer films or shows or, you know, any form of content made by queer people? I mean, we're at a really pivotal moment in Indian filmmaking. Uh, we're seeing more representation across the board. Uh, I mean, even, even at Mami, right? Um, the idea was to definitely have the right gaze and the right intention and this with Prime Video as well as us, like we made sure that like, like when I met Jaidi for the first time, I knew that that there's no better person to captain the ship um, as soon as he came on board because you need people who sort of empathize and understand the kind of storytelling that we, our intention is there, but as from as people who are not directly within the community, you need to give people from the community the stage to be able to tell their stories. You put them in front. You know, um, Naveen also has worked with us at Vice for a very long time. He writes for us and stuff. And like, I think Naveen was one of the first people that we pulled into this project as soon as, you know, we knew that Prime Video was interested in it. Um, so the idea was always to surround ourselves with people from the LGBTQI plus community. Uh, as soon as Jaideep came, the first conversation was, okay, now who else? Who else? Where do we find? And I think these kind of conversations are happening more often. Uh, there is an awareness uh, within the community, in the filmmaking community as well, that these stories need to be told. Yes, but who are they being told by? You know, and that awareness is, I think, what will propel more content being made f from people within communities about their own stories. Yeah. I wanted to add one part uh, about Trinetra's casting in Made in Heaven. So you're taking a character who's been written as a trans character and getting a trans ca person to play it. Uh, otherwise, you know, typically you'd get someone who's not trans root. So that's also uh, being progressive in this front. I also feel the end goal is really where we're able to sort of put people before labels and get everybody to do all kinds of shows, right? So you have queer directors making straight stories, straight directors making queer stories. Any, It's at the end of the day a, a really good story and whoever's making it, uh, it should just be all inclusive. I mean, that's really the end goal. We, of course, have a journey. Uh, we've tried to do that in a lot of our shows and, you know, put this uh, put this out there. Uh, and increasingly, there is much more uh, acceptance as well. But the end goal would be, you know, where all of us can tell each other's stories without labels. I, I, yeah, I really resonate with this. I'm really scared that I will become queer director. I'll be labeled as queer director and everyone will say, now you just do queer stories because, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think you have to be an alien to make E.T. Uh, I don't think, uh, one of the films that I really loved, uh, in the, actually the only film that resonated with me queer story was Badhaido, made by a completely cishet team. Yeah. I don't know how they managed it, how they pulled it up. I went in wanting to hate it. Uh, I said, what are And I came out loving it. Me and my partner went to see it. But yes, representation, but you you know, one thing that Samira did in the making of this show was um, allowed empathy to rule the room, whether it is the edit, whether it is the production uh, or whether it is the pre-production. You know, if you have empathetic people, whether they are queer or allies or whatever, if you can connect with another person's pain and if you have empathy, na, if, if you're a nice person. Na. And I remember when we used to initially hire, Sam would keep saying... Uh, vibe is right. And I didn't know what she meant. It's only in the edit I figured out that she was just looking for people who were empathetic. Yeah, I especially want to shout out to both direction teams also. Shubhra and Ride and that assistant directors Radhika, Paul and Shashank because at any point if shit went sideways, they were there, you know. Like, 
so much so that the second assistant director under this team shalini became one with sanam and anish's family like her mom would not let her go she was feeding her food and she kept them at home only so i think that's what i'm saying right they were if there were issues if there were anything going wrong we were all there with them we were like you tell us the story we won't we won't want to put words in your mouth because this is your story and at any point if you feel like this is not happening tell us you know how you feel about it because when trin went on a couple of dates and she didn't after the you see the plot point right now where it is at after that she has an awakening so you will see that and she took us there we didn't ask her abhi kya abhi aur bande logo ko date karegi nahi she was like yeah, i'll i'll decide where this goes and we were all up for it we were like let's go because i said like spoilers yeah i'm not giving spoilers i'm just saying you will see what happens next you know it's very exciting <laughs> seventh yeah yeah hi so hi. Uh, i have a sort of broad general question so we just saw that the uh, supreme court rule against uh, gay marriage and in such a scenario uh, when ind- queer individuals continue to like love and live their lives that in itself becomes like a political act right it's it's a challenge to that so can you all comment on how romantic love in particular can challenge systemic oppression I think our very existence challenges every notion out there, right? Like the fact, as as we already maintained, like my partner and I have been together five years. We've been living together four years. So when we pay our bills and taxes, we're paying our normal bills and taxes. We're not paying gay bills, you know. So I think if if everybody understood just that aspect of it, we are just people who are trying to make a living. The only sad aspect is, but tomorrow if I'm dying, my partner can't be there. We can't have a joint bank account. You know what I'm saying? So these are the things that we are fighting for. We don't want the same idea of marriage that everybody else has always preached. We we want civil unions. that will make it easier for us to exist and and as you said like the show i think it's come at a pivotal time based like a proper bomb on that wound that we just got inflicted and if anything it will help us get fortified now stronger as a community even harder i think there's been a lot of ideological differences also within the community and i feel this is the show that will kind of tie us together if nothing else yeah but more than anything else i think every piece is political i yeah. feel anything 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 that you see is political i don't think our intention is political i think we have made a romantic antic documentary now why can imtiaz ali make jab we met and why can't i make this why do, why is my thing political that that question i'm is a little uncomfortable for me i mean you'll never ask imtiaz ali if jab we met is political dekho court mein jo ho raha hai and we have great faith in the courts and you know that's a very separate topic i just don't think what we have made has anything to do with what is happening in the country right now because i have i am in my head i have made a romantic documentary that's all that's it uh hi my name is sanika and my question is for nikhil uh wh- who is the target audience for this series and what kind of impact do you think rainbow rishta will have on its audience so you know you'll you'll hear this um, word at amazon quite often that we are uh, customer obsessed Uh, and uh, and i think the community is uh, at large is our customers for amazon they need to see stories which represent them uh, and represent them in the correct way so that's you know the 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 core tg but i think this show goes much broader than that because our intention as i said from storytelling is that people who may have misunderstandings through the show those barriers should break Uh, it should have a positive impact it should bring sort of people together change mindsets and that's why it's important that uh, a much larger number of people are able to watch it uh, if you go by just uh, the ratings this is a 16 plus show from a ratings perspective so i, I would say anybody who's above 16 in the country should be able to watch it and 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 i really hope that this goes way beyond just the community because it is frankly so much about other people watching this and and you know getting a better understanding uh, of the community uh, and we are really hopeful uh, this is our first attempt and we're not going to stop at this okay thank you